Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Uh, today it's going to be episode 3 of Heretic, Shadow of the Serpent Riders. Uh, now just a few days ago I uploaded a episode, uh, a full playthrough of episode 2 called Hell's Maw. And I apologize, you guys can't really see this text. Oh, there you go, that's a little bit better. Um, but today we're going to be playing through the Dome of Despairal. And this is where the game starts to get really, really difficult uh, from here on out. Um, which is why Heretic, while awesome, is <laughs> it's a lot more frustrating than, say, Doom or something, or Doom, or even Doom 2. I mean, this is a lot harder than Doom 2. You guys will see exactly what I mean, um, especially towards the end of this episode. It just gets pretty nuts. And we still have two more episodes to go that I still have to practice, and I'm not really looking forward to practicing them. It took me like three hours to get through this damn third episode yesterday. Um... Let's hope it doesn't take us three hours today. I think it's going to take us a whole lot less time. Um, I'm not sure what the video length is as of this recording, but uh, I'm sure you guys can tell what the length is uh, just by checking that uh, bar on the bottom of the video. So let's uh, stop rambling. Let's get right into it. Again, we're going to play in the hardest difficulty mode, which for this episode is probably a mistake. Uh, probably a mistake. And it looks like it re-enabled... I don't know why it re-enabled my... Auto aim, or sorry, mouse looks. We gotta dis disable that. Let's make sure. Uh, allow auto aim, yes. Uh, free look, no. So a heretic by default did not have free look. That is something that uh, was enabled through this source port. I am currently using Z Doom to play this, and um, let's make sure that player setup auto aim is on. So basically, how it worked is really. Player setup, mail, switch on pickup, always run on, class, blah, blah, blah. What the heck game are you doing? Off. Thank you. That's more like it. Okay. So in Heretic, you could basically turn left and right. Um, and like in Doom, uh, as long as you were lined up with the enemy, regardless whether they were right in front of you or above you, your bullets would just go up and hit them. Uh, or down, if they're down below you. So... Okay, so this uh, first level is probably one of the hardest, simply because it gets crazy right out of, out of the gate, and uh, you don't really have your weapons to deal with things. So what we're going to do is just try to skip these guys, come over here and flip this switch. You need to flip both switches. There's an enemy over here, I'm just going to try to take him out. Play it a little bit safe, but not super safe. I don't want this to, again, take three hours, but... So let's go ahead and take this guy out. A lot of heretic in terms of uh, dodging and so forth is just really simplistic. Move left, move light, right, move left, move right, move left, move right. Uh, so you're going to be see a lot. You're going to be be seeing a lot of simple dodging like that in this game. Uh, heretic uh, has a level design that is oftentimes set up in a way where you're stuck in corridors. You don't have huge open areas to just circle straight around enemies like you do in say Doom. And we wanted to pick up this dragon claw here, which is this weapon. And, uh, actually what I want to do is try to get some ammo for this thing, because there's going to be some ammo in here, and here, and there's a backpack, actually, I totally forgot about that. So there's that, and let's try to get the, whatever ammo is in here, and I'm trying to keep moving, because those guys up top, they shoot out, uh, spread shots, and it's very, very difficult to avoid them. They're some of the most annoying enemies in this game. All right. So this part over here, I think what I want to do is try to save it for later. and see if that works. I don't want to waste this ammo um, when I don't need to. Because basically what's happening is we need to come through here. We need to get some keys or a key. Sorry. And we're still running out of ammo, so I'm going to switch to this weapon for a little bit. I'm going to need my Dragon Claw for uh, the next section. So let's just stick this in, uh, stick this weapon out. Or stick with this weapon. Jeez, I can't talk. Uh, 
while things are still easy. Uh, these guys, they don't actually have projectiles. They're some of the few non-projectile based enemies in this game. And we've got these guys now, and they shoot projectiles. And they are a lot of projectile enemies in this game. And you know what's funny? I don't think I can think of a single hitscan enemy in this game. Is there such a thing as hitscanning enemies in Heretic? I'm trying to think, and like, I mean, I guess technically these guys that can get right up to you, I guess they're technically hit scanning, but, you know, I don't really count the melee guys as hit scanning enemies. Hit scanning is basically like, you know, uh, enemies that can shoot bullets that you don't see, and they can pretty much just hit you as long as you're in their line of sight anywhere on the map. That's hit scanning. Wolfenstein 3D had a lot of it, uh, Classic Doom had a lot of it with your uh, zombie soldiers and your. Um, Zombie, uh... Heavy weapon dudes. Alright, I think this is good enough. Let's go ahead and just try to take these guys out. So our first key is gonna be down this corridor and around the corner, basically. And I was basically trying to use that uh, yellow ammunition, my stock wand. Whatever it's actually called. Uh, so I could save the ammo for this part, because these guys... Again, as you can see, I'm stuck in a very thin corridor. Now, I could try to bait these guys out. But I'm not really going to do that. I'm just going to dodge left and right. Like I said, there's a lot of left and right dodging in this game. Like, very, very subtle left and right dodging like this. You're not going to see me doing, like, massive swoops in dodging like you might see me do in, say, Doom. Uh, Heretic is just laid out a little bit differently. You know, there's lots of tight corridors in this game. Uh, in Doom, there was really more room to do some actual dodging dodging. Heretic, not as much so. Let's make sure we got all the health here. I'm pretty sure... Oh, there's one. Pretty sure we grabbed most of it. There's another. Cool. And just in case, let's, uh... Just like this, uh, the last episode we did, we're gonna do a bit of quick saving. And again, Heretic LP. So we're gonna come back up this way. This is where our... we use our yellow key. It's gonna be this guy in here. And by picking up this key, a bunch of these knights come out. Unfortunately, they're like Spectre Knights. You know, Spectres in Doom were like the transparent pinky demons. And unfortunately, Heretic takes some of the more tricky enemies and makes them half invisible sometimes. Which can be a little aggravating. I'm actually not a big fan of that uh, in this game. I'm sure the developers were like, oh, this is really cool. Let's take these enemies and make them transparent like the, you know, the Spectres in Doom. But... Uh, I really think it was unnecessary for this game. I think Heretic is plenty difficult as is. It didn't really need uh, the extra boost in difficulty. So, uh, this right here is actually where we encounter these guys for the very first time. We're going to be seeing them a lot throughout this episode. They basically shoot uh, fast, rapid-paced projectiles at you, or rapid-fire projectiles. Much like a lot of other enemies in this game, it's very simple, um, move left, move right, sort of dodgy, nothing crazy. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and quick save again. We're gonna be doing a lot of quick saving, just so I don't have to, uh, you know, redo a lot of my, uh, my gameplay when I die, because I'm sure I'm going to die. So, basically, I knew that Skull guy was there. And I wanted to try to take him out, but I didn't want to waste my ammo on him before going through the other sections. So this is pretty much the final section. And I have a bit of a trick up my sleeve here, and it's not really up my sleeve. I think the game kind of wants you to do what I'm going to do. And uh, up here in this pillar, right there, there's actually an invincibility power-up. That mask uh, is actually invulnerability. And you can use it on command. It's not like Doom where you pick it up and um, you automatically use it. So again, for those of you guys that might not have caught my first uh, episode, there's actually an inventory system in this game, and you can hit the left and right brackets to switch through your inventory. This item here is called the Chaos Device. This will actually teleport you to a random spot on the map. 
Or does it just take you back to the beginning? It might take you back to the beginning. I don't remember exactly how it works. This potion is health. This brightens up your scenery, which we'll go ahead and use just so I can show you. Um, so the invincibility power-up is the same way. It's just an item you get that you can use on command. Uh, as is this one, called the Shadow Sphere, apparently. So we need to flip a switch. And what I want to do is switch back to an actual weapon. Because this wall is going to come down. Now, what's kind of interesting about Heretic is that enemies take so long to kill compared to Doom, and I think um, Heretic would play a lot faster if enemies took a whole lot less hits. Like, if they took the same amount of hits as they did in, say, Doom, um, I think uh, you'd be able to just plow through this game a, a whole lot faster. Unfortunately, uh, enemies do take quite some time to kill. Uh, so to get this invincibility, I don't know if there's an actual switch you can flip, um, but I do know that by using these wings you got, or get, I just got them, you can fly up and grab the invincibility. So I'm going to go ahead and select the invincibility. And what I'm going to do is actually switch over to this weapon so I don't waste any ammo. And the reason I'm going to use the invincibility, I'm just going to use it right now, is because we have to fight another one of those big-ass skull guys that have the tornadoes and whatnot. And so what this is going to allow us to do is just kill these guys uh, without wasting ammo. See, here he is. And without taking damage. And it's mostly about take, not taking damage because it's very difficult to deal with these guys in close quarters combat like this. Fortunately, they don't take that long to kill. And I got to conserve some ammo. And what we're going to do is actually flip open this door right here for our Hell Staff. Now, there's actually one more secret in this level, and I have no idea where it is. Um, so if anybody has an idea of where the secret is, please let me know. I was actually looking for it on stream yesterday when I was practicing this, and I just was not able to find it at all. So how long did it take us? 10 minutes? Yeah, a little bit slower than I expected, but hey, we're doing a Let's Play, so... You know, I can't just blaze right through it. Now let me take a sip of my soda. Which I probably shouldn't be drinking, because it's... It's like 9 a.m. in the morning, and I have to go to sleep soon. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and try to take out these guys. There's gonna be some more of those, uh, staff-wielding snake-type things here. Don't exactly know the, uh, the enemy's name. The reason I'm going to take these guys out is because I am going to appear in one of those cubbies. One of the cubbies actually has another invincibility power-up, which, uh, again, we're going to be using. We're going to use pretty much every major power-up that we can get just to make life easier. There's some health here and here. And here. So the Hell Staff is very much, like I mentioned in the last episode, uh, like the Plasma Gun from Doom. I don't think it's quite as useful as the Plasma Gun from Doom, because uh, the enemies do take more hits in this game than they do in, say, Doom. So it's a little bit harder to just, like, mow through enemies uh, in a super satisfying manner like you do in Doom. But uh, it is still useful. My only complaint with it is that not so much that it's not as powerful, at least it doesn't feel as powerful as the plasma gun does, it's that um, it's really hard to see what you're doing when you're using it. So... And this is actually not the one we want to go to. We're going to go to the other side because there's going to be a crossbow. Which is one of the most useful weapons in the game, to me, anyway. And here it is. And we got some more Wings of Wrath, is what they call them, apparently. Got some mummies in here. Remember that from here on out, the mummies shoot projectiles, and they can home in, and it, uh... can be annoying. Quite annoying, especially when you've got a lot of mummies on, like, the other side of the map in a really big, wide-open room. 
All right, we need to flip that switch. Try to take out a lot of these guys if we can. You want to come up? Oh, there you go. Good little gargoyle. <laughs> All right, and uh, so that switch we flipped basically lowered this right here, this key. And uh, so now we can come back out and... It's not a secret there, I didn't think so. Basically come through this door. This is actually a secret. Which is actually a really good secret because we got a backpack and we got a hundred armor. Good time to quick save. You see the um the, the bow and arrow in this game is, or the crossbow, it's very much like the shotgun in Doom. Um, I mean, sure, it's an actual projectile. And by the way, what we're going to want to do here is, I believe... <sighs> Actually, I don't think this is the part I was thinking of, but we're going to go ahead and... Oh, it is the part I'm thinking of. This is a very difficult part. I got wrecked at this part yesterday. It's because there's four of these guys here. I wasn't sure if this was the part or not. But yeah, so basically, they're like on all four sides of the room, you come in, and they just start wailing on you. You can die almost instantly, especially on the hardest skill mode that we're playing right now. Let's go ahead and switch over to this weapon. I, I barely use it on this playthrough, or my playthrough. My last playthrough. And it's not the most useful thing, apparently, when it's powered up. Let's wait for it to get powered down. Okay. So I was basically using the Tome of Power. Yeah, this weapon's not as useful as I remember it being, but, yeah, whatever. So the Tome of Power, when you activate that, it's basically your book, which, uh, is this one right here. Let's go ahead and use, uh, use some potions. And bring... Oh yeah, look at that! That's good stuff. We should just play through the rest of the game like that. Uh, I forgot which one I have to go through. Uh, I don't think it's not this one. So we go through the other one. Oh, there's... Oh, that was, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> I thought that when you teleported in this game... Oh. That's different, too. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Last time I played this, I actually went uh, through a different path. Let's go ahead and just take out all these guys, kind of try to play it safe. Taking damage, but there's enemies on both sides of me. Yeah, so that, like, steel ball weapon actually wasn't as useful as I remembered it being. I remember using it a lot back in the day, um, but... Apparently, it's actually not that useful, so... Now, I was thinking to myself before starting this Let's Play, and like, you know what, maybe I should try to using that weapon more often. Maybe it's... Because I remember it being good back in the day, but... Uh, apparently, it's not that good, as you guys just saw. So, I've got a green key. I'm gonna come back here, try to see if I can get some health. I'm pretty sure there's health I'm, I'm missing. Some enemies I'm missing, too, apparently. Seriously, dude, you're not dead yet. Please die. Whew. Okay, we're just gonna do a, a once-over in here. I don't think there's any health I missed. I think I pretty much got it all already. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Oh, there's one. Nope, not this way. Gotta go back and... Oh, there's a torch at least. Torches are useful. There we go. Okay, green door.
Oh yeah, I'm taking a completely different path than I did last time. That's funny. It's like when I- I actually practiced this level twice yesterday. Um... And I actually started to die a lot on this part. So we're gonna switch over to our potion. And we're switch over to our torch too, just because... It seems like this weapon is good at stunning enemies, at least. So if you got projectile guys, it's... It seems like it's okay for that. It's not guaranteed... ...like it is in Doom. If you're using, like, the chain gun against, like, Kaka Demons in Doom... ...they're probably not gonna be able to, uh, attack you. <laughs> you're gonna just keep them... ...in a stun lock, basically. Alright, so let's switch over to the bow and arrow because, or the crossbow, because you can see there's ammo laying around, so I might as well use the weapon that I know I've got guaranteed ammo for. So these orbs are flame orbs, they're basically for the phoenix rod, which is, yeah, essentially the, uh, you know, heretics, oh, here it is, speak of the devil, heretics version of the rocket launcher, and it's pretty much just as powerful, it's, it's really, really powerful, so... Unfortunately, you cannot carry as much ammo as you can for the actual rocket launcher in Doom, which is, uh, which is a shame. So we're actually almost at the end of this level. That, uh, closed up, sort of like, metallic wall we just passed through. Um... This one right here. That's actually, uh, the exit. So this is our final room. This could be a tricky room, though. There's gonna be more of those warlock-type things that have their three-way spread shot, unfortunately. So I really want to clear this room out first. And what we're going to do is actually... Well, get some items. And, uh, get some more ammo. Guess we don't need ammo, so let's switch back over to this weapon. Since there's ammo for that here. And we're picking up ammo for our staffs. There's our invincibility power up. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to use it. Uh, because this part is kind of annoying. Let's go ahead and move over to that. And what I want to do is actually pick up the blue key at the same time. Here's our invincibility. Let's kill these guys. I'm going to switch over to this too, actually. Why not? And actually, let's skip these dudes for now. Let's go kill this. Oh! Okay, I can't do that yet, apparently. Alright, whatever. Let's just try to focus on taking these guys out then while we're invincible. Didn't quite work out as planned, unfortunately. What I should have done is actually grab this egg, the Morph Ovum, as they call it, and use that on those uh, Warlock dudes. Because that would have turned them into uh, chickens in one hit, basically. Got more ammo here. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use a Tome of Power. I feel like I'm missing something here. Ah, uh, that's what I'm missing. I totally forgot. You basically have to flip this switch to enable... ...our Skull Friend. So we're gonna save it, and we're gonna go ahead and use, um... The Morph Ovum doesn't work on this guy, unfortunately. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and use this, and then use one of these. And switch over to this weapon. No, not that weapon. This weapon. Because what this does is it leaves uh, rain showers, which do uh, damage. Oh, man, did that do some damage. So basically, it does a rain shower 
and uh, it just constantly damages uh, the enemy, especially if they just sit in place and they don't do anything like that guy did. I'm just waiting for the, yeah, the tornado. Those tornadoes stay out for a long, long time. And then that's it. So we're on to level three. You can see where these levels are of a decent length. They, uh, you know, Heretic, it, it takes much longer to go through than, say, Doom. And what I want to do is take out this dude first. In Heretic, your priority is these really big enemies because they do a ton of damage. You know what? My priority right now is to skip most of these guys. Enemies don't seem to be too good at opening doors in this game, so... I figure I'll just deal with those enemies outside and uh, when I have to go back outside. Any secrets here? I didn't think so. Alright, so let's save it. I think this is gonna pop us back out up top, yeah. Which is gonna give us our green key. Uh, which will allow us to go through these double doors at the end. Or I should say two sets of green doors. Alright, let's pick up the ammo. <coughs> Sorry. So the exit for the level is right here at the beginning through both these doors. So we're gonna have to come through here. Uh, let's make sure there aren't any enemies here. Let's take out these guys. Alright, get some health. Keep your aim nice and steady. And what I'm doing is just slowly tapping to circle strafe. I'm trying to figure out where all the enemies are. I know there's guys up top here. I know there's guys on the bottom. There's guys in the water. Fortunately, this dragon claws dragon claw is really good about actually going all the way across the screen. It doesn't seem to lock on all the way across the screen, but as long as the enemies are on the same level as you, it literally goes all the way across the map and will hit. Which is very nice. Let's try it. Actually, let's take out these guys up top first. Looks like that's it. I'm gonna take out these guys in here too, because we're gonna have to eventually go up here. And there's gonna be some other projectile enemies up top where that, uh, blue key is. I hear you, but I don't see you. Alright, whatever. What I actually want to do is come up here first. I don't remember that bottom area was necessary, but...
Ah, eh, screw it. We'll come down here anyway. It's really satisfying killing these guys in one hit with the uh, the crossbow. It seems like the crossbow does more damage the closer you are to the enemies, so... it's I Ideally, you want to be, again, really close to the, en the enemies if you can. So I'm going to skip that teleporter for now. I'm going to come back into this door here. I'm going to go ahead and use some health. Switch over to the morph ovum. Uh, just in case. Now, the Morph Ovum is actually a really nice little sort of last resort kind of weapon or item. Because it'll turn most enemies into chickens instantly. So you don't have to worry about getting ganged up. Like, if I got cornered by a bunch of enemies, using the Morph, morph Ovum would be really, really good. Uh, to get out of a really tight situation really quickly. I must be thinking of a different level. I thought we were going to get ganged up by those warlock guys in a uh, different room. So let's go ahead and open that, because that's a secret. Another Tome of Power. The tomes are really good. So we should be able to grab that blue key now. Yep, I can see the doors have opened. So this is where it gets a little tricky. There's uh, some projectile guys that are going to come out. Seen something. I thought that was supposed to open up. I guess there's no switch or anything. I don't see one. Oops, we have to come around this way actually because the blue door is on this side. There it goes. Okay. And a third one. Uh, this is the room I'm thinking of. So we're going to go back down, get some health back. Because there should be plenty of health out here. Another Phoenix Staff. Which we don't need. <laughs> We've already got it. We're maxed out on ammo for it. There was more more health I was missing. Yeah. I 
Oh, I've got a ton of potions. Might, have, might as well use some. Switch back over to the Morph Ovum. And I'm really going to need it here. So let's come through here and quick save. Oh! You can kind of see why I would need it. So those are really some of the most difficult guys in this game, if you ask me. Uh, not that they're necessarily difficult by themselves, but when the developers put them like five or six in a single room, they can become trouble pretty damn quick. Like, pretty, pretty quick. And, uh, we should almost be done with this level. And this ceiling will come down and try to crush you for some, uh, Phoenix Rod ammo. Hey, a secret. A secret that I don't think I knew about. So that's cool. Alright, we got a Mystic Urn. The urns give you all your health back. Looks like this switch up here is what opens up our exit. Yep, there it is. If you have to fight these guys in close quarters like this, it's best to just take it nice and safe. And if you see a tornado coming out, you probably want to avoid it. Yeah, some of these secrets are really predictable. Ow, that hurt too. And that's it. Level, uh... Level 3, so we're on to level 4 now. Now this episode, I think, has 8 or 9 levels. So it's a really long episode. Alright, so what we're gonna do is try to uh, take out these guys in here. Now, the reason we're actually bothering with these guys is that, uh... We're gonna eventually end up in those water areas. And there's gonna be invincibility power-up here. You wanna jump off this elevator really quick, otherwise you won't be able to get it. Go ahead and use that urn, get all our health back, and we're gonna go ahead and switch over to yeah, the potion. And let's try this door first. What's behind door number one? Death, most likely. Because it's heretic.
Alright, got some armor. Oh, that's where the main exit is. Ah! I was actually running around this level like crazy the other day for trying to find the real exit. Uh, <laughs> and I couldn't find it. It was, it was here all along. Uh. Well, since I know where the secret exit is, I might as well play through that on this Let's Play. Why not, right? I was gonna originally skip the uh, the secret exit, so the let's play would take less time. But might as well show it if I know where it is. So when you're using this weapon, you can actually tell that you're making contact with enemies when the blue sparkle effect is is big. You can kind of see it like exploding on the enemies, basically. That's when you know you're actually making contact with that weapon. Which is good to know when you're like attacking enemies that are in pitch black and you can't actually see them. So this wall is going to come down, or ceiling. This is going to open up, and you can basically use the ceiling to kill enemies for you. That's exactly what we're going to do. Oh, geez, there's more. Where'd you guys come from? get out of their line of sight so they actually start walking forward, just like that, and then let them get crushed. Another Mystic Urn. Come back through here just to make sure we got all the items and whatnot. There's a wall here that's actually... It's a pass-through wall. I can't actually go through it, but I can shoot through it at least. But so can the enemies. So what I like to do is just try to take these guys out. Very easy to get disoriented in that room. You're like, uh, which way am I supposed to go? There's four directions and they all look the same. All right, so we've got the yellow key now. I basically need to flip, uh, wait, actually, I don't need to flip anything. Uh, there's a secret down on the other side here. I'm not gonna go there. I've got the green key. I just want to keep pressing forward. I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, but accessing the secret area is actually over here. What I'm gonna do is do what I did the other day, switch over to this Phoenix Rod, and try to take these guys out really quickly. There's just so many projectile guys there, it makes life a whole lot easier. And the 
this is why we quick save. Because <laughs> I'm down to four health. to switch over to death, apparently. We have to do this whole section over again. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to my health. I died. I, how did I kill myself? Ay, ay, ay. This is why you quick save. So, Heretic can have some really dangerous situations. I would say this is probably one of them. I'm going to go ahead and use. Uh, ah, screw it. You know what? Let's get invincible. He's a flamethrower while we're at it. You know what I actually forgot to do? Uh, aside from getting the secret exit, which I think that switch might have actually activated it. Let me let me check. Yeah, this is the secret exit right here. <laughs> um, let me go back to the beginning, actually, because there is something I missed. Well, I missed all these items too. The most important ones right here: the uh, enchanted shield, which gives you two hundred. 200 armor, but this teleporter actually takes you back here, which gives you all these items. And probably part of my problem is not going here, getting all my health back and whatnot. And uh, most of my ammo in the process. Oh yeah, lots of good stuff here. And yep, the original exit is open, but I promised you guys we'd go to the secret exit. I don't really want to. Because this Let's Play is just going to take so much time. But, uh... We're going to do it anyway. Just for you guys. Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually skip this whole area down here. It's really unnecessary. It just takes us back to where our yellow key was. And we're going to skip these guys. Goodbye. And, uh, yeah, we're already up to, uh, 45 minutes. Technically 50 minutes. Close to it, and we're probably only about halfway through this Let's Play. You can really see how long Heretic is compared to, um... Like, Doom. You know what? I guess the uh, the length of the of both games is pretty comparable. Or say like Doom Two to Heretic. Ultimate Doom, I think I can run through pretty quickly, probably in just three hours or so. But uh, Doom Two takes me. I think it took me like six hours to get through that game on Let's Play. I think each part, each half of my Let's Play for that was like three hours long, maybe more.
I'm gonna double check that. I'm kind of curious now how long my Doom 2 Let's Play was. So one of the cool things about Heretic is that, um, well, it's cool to a degree, and then when you get to, say, the boss level of this episode, it's not cool. But it's cool right now. And what it is, is, uh, enemies have a little bit of knockback whenever you hit them with a strong weapon, like, um, like the crossbow. They get pushed back a little bit. And so basically what happens is if you get cornered, you're less likely to take damage, uh, from enemies cornering you. Which was cool, which was actually a good design choice, uh, to a degree. I kind of wish they would only get knocked back if they were, like, right in front of you. Because there's some- there's- you'll see exactly what I mean once we get to the boss fight. Um... Uh, the- the constant knockback actually makes it difficult to hit aerial enemies... ...with, uh, projectile-based weapons. Because so many weapons in this game are projectile based. Now they're not hit scan weapons. It's, um. You know, say these guys, you get them in a big open room, they start flying all the way across the room, and if you only have projectile based weapons, it's insanely difficult to actually make efficient use of your ammunition. Alright, so if we walk over these pillars, it's actually going to open up a door over there. Uh, what I want to do is actually try to not open it yet. I want to get some health first. And open that up. But uh, let's go ahead and use our invisibility. Not invincibility, but invisibility. And try to take out these guys. The invisibility actually didn't really matter that much, because they already knew I was here. Uh, what the invisibility does, it basically makes it so if an enemy doesn't know you're there, they won't know you're there until... Uh, until you actually start firing at them. So if you want to try to be stealthy with the level, and uh, not kill anything unless you have to, you can actually use the invisibility to do that, which is kind of cool. You can get a little strategic with it if you want. If you're trying to play like pacifist style or something like that. Or just avoid a very specific enemy to get an advantage on it.
Another crushing ceiling to my aid. Another morph ovum. All right, where do I need to go? Just trying to pick up some ammo. I'm gonna come back this way and not get health because there's no health to get. I thought maybe there would be. Oh, there it is, just a little bit. I'm trying to remember, where was the blue door? There's a blue door here somewhere. Probably through uh, this teleporter. Let's do the old quick save, make life easier. Got the mystic urn highlighted just in case I need it. I think the exit's actually through here. Definitely needed the Mystic Urn. Yeah, and so the blue door is actually... Oh, come on, really? Alright, whatever. We've got invincibility. I'm just gonna take advantage of it. Now, I also used uh, the Tome of Power the Tome of Power is great for uh, your, you know, your gauntlets because your gauntlets turn into uh, health stealing gauntlets. Not only do they do the same damage, but they also steal health and give it back to you. Let's switch back to a normal weapon. Let's try the Dragon Claw. This could be a problem. The thing about Heretic is if you get overwhelmed, it can be very difficult to actually survive because... You don't have that much room to dodge. <laughs> you don't have that much room to like, get around enemies. Um, so, if you're the kind of person that likes to play for survival, you know, the kind of person that likes to take things really slow, uh, you probably want to, will do just that, take things really, really slow. Like, kill one or two enemies at a time, backtrack a little, maybe even bait some enemies out, kill them one at a time. Uh, but doing what I was doing there, and just like, bolting right through the hallways, probably not a wise idea. Uh, unless you've got some kind of backup plan, which I don't usually. But fortunately, I do have items. Those can sort of act as my backup plan sometimes. actually come back up if it lets me. There's a couple switches up here I want to flip. I've got a torch. The torches are good. Let's switch back over to, yeah, our hell staff or whatever it's called. Quick save it. 
do it. Gonna, we're gonna do a lot of quick saving here because we've got a Molotor and another Skull Dude. Two Skull Dudes, actually. All right. I just wanted to show you where they where they were. So this part was a little tricky at first, and uh, you can actually avoid a lot of the enemies. You just need to flip the right switch. Which I think I actually flipped the right switch. Hey, where are you guys coming from? Yeah, enemies take so many hits in Heretic. So many hits. So as you can see, this room is more like a troll room. It's like, oh, if you don't flip the right switch, you're just going to waste ammunition when you don't actually need to. So what you needed to do is just flip that one switch to open up this room. And uh, these walls are going to eventually come up so you can get that green key. I kind of want to see what's through this teleporter. They gave me an invisibility power up, might as well use it. So I knew these guys were here, and I learned that lesson the hard way, yet, hard way yesterday. By just literally bolting into here, and uh, getting ganged up by all these enemies at one time, and uh, needless to say, uh, my life didn't last very long. More enemies. This game just doesn't give up. In the third episode, it's just really... It's brutal compared to uh, the first two episodes. I mean, both of those episodes have their tricky parts. Uh, but episode three is just... If, if you start taking it light at any given moment, you can just be dead very, very quickly. Might as well switch over to the crossbow, because uh, there's so much ammo for it. And uh, what we're going to do is actually switch over to the book, too. Or the Tome of Power. As it is uh, appropriately known. 
Let's go ahead and activate that. So I like using the Tome of Power with the crossbow because it makes the crossbow fire so much faster. And not only that, it makes it a five-way uh, spread shot instead of a three-way. And that's our exit. The Halls of Fear. Ah, this is a tricky level. Tricky, tricky level. But really, it's Heretic. What level isn't tricky in this game? Man, I think we need to fall down, actually. So if you haven't noticed by now, you can kind of see how the uh, auto-aim works when you've got enemies above you. And this is how uh, Heretic was originally played back in the day. You didn't really have... I thought you could look up and down in this game. Maybe that wasn't introduced until Hexen. Um, but uh, there was no mouse look in Heretic back in the day. And uh, so you basically played it like this where you were always just facing forward, and uh, the game would just sort of aim up for you, or the bullets and projectiles would go upwards for you. Tornadoes are, are bad, okay? Alright, so we got the yellow key. We can come down here. You can see these denote that this is a yellow door. And... Really? It's not going to activate any of them? Okay. Go ahead and use that. And we're going to use a Morph Ovum. Hello, gentlemen. Would you like to turn into a chicken today? Oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> uh, didn't quite work out as planned. Uh, but what I will do is use another Tome of Power. Switch over to this weapon here. This might actually be the best weapon to use powered up. Unfortunately, it uses 5 ammo a shot instead of the usual 1 ammo. Um, but as you can see, it spreads out like crazy when you use it, and so it's very, very useful. So there's actually a Molotaur here, which is the big-ass Minotaur enemy. 
that uh, basically acts as like the s heretic's version of the cyber demon from Doom. And uh, when you get them up close, they're equally as dangerous as the cyber demons ever were. That morph ovum came into use. You can get very tired of these uh, transparent walls or walk-through walls, whatever the hell you want to call them. I'm not even sure what you would des describe them as. I went ahead and used the uh, crystal... That was... okay, never mind. Multiple switches, but I'm not sure what both of them do. Alright, so the blue door is up here. That's pretty important later on. And uh, I think one of those switches might have lowered our green key. Let's find out. Yep. So now we can go back through our green door. And do the old quick save. And there's the Molotor. What I'm gonna do is try to let him just kill the enemies for me. If at all possible. Man, it seems like the monster infighting doesn't work quite as well as it does in Doom. Ow! Well, he at least killed one enemy for me. <laughs> Including me. I guess I am technically an enemy, right? Molotov just want to be friends. <laughs> Imagine if these guys actually had, like, emotions. <laughs> Give Molotor a hug. <laughs> it's like, ah, no thanks, I'm just gonna keep running the other way. Oh my god, I can see why they're giving me the Chaos Device. The chaos Device just teleports me back. Part of the issue is also these other enemies. Yeah, the thing that can make this guy actually tougher than a Cyber Demon is the fact that he can dash towards you. The Cyber Demon just kind of like sits there. And just kind of rumbles at you and... Now don't get me wrong, the Cyber Demons can be insanely dangerous as well. Uh, but the Molotors I think can actually be even more dangerous.
So I'm gonna let these enemies just duke it out. That actually takes us right back up, so we're gonna go this way. Alright, so we need to come down here anyway. Uh, to our blue door. Oh, more guys! Great! They just don't ever stop. And they especially don't ever stop hitting, like, freaking tanks. That could just be a, a you know, a result of playing on the hardest difficulty mode. But, man, enemies hit really hard in this game. And, uh, this is actually our exit, I believe. Jeez, another one? Come on. It keeps giving me ammo. Uh, ammo? <laughs> keeps giving me ammo for the weapon I'm not using. Maybe I should use that weapon. <laughs> I think it's trying to tell me something. Oh my god! And this is why you quick save more often, guys. <laughs> now I'm just getting impatient. This is what I do on, on stream. You guys probably don't ever want to watch me play this game on stream, because... I'll take, like, a hit, and then I'll reload. <laughs> Actually, I don't feel that bad doing it when I've already played a section. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is just take the exit. Normally what you're supposed to do is actually play through the rest of the level, get all the nice hidden items and whatnot, feel all cushy because you've found a lot of stuff. Um... But we don't need to do that, because we're at the exit. I don't think I really need the ammunition, so... The chasm. Alright, so this is our last level prior to the boss stage.
We've actually been playing for almost an hour and a half now. And I haven't really died and had to... You know, uh, redo my progress... Uh, that much. So you can really see how this game can take a while to get through. It takes even longer when you're playing it slow. And I'm, pl I'm still playing it relatively slow, but... Not as slow as I was yesterday when I first played it. Now, there's some enemies outside. I'm just going to let them kind of duke it out on their own. I'm not going to really worry about them. Well, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I forgot I'm going outside. Uh, actually, what I did last time is I, actually, I tried taking all the enemies out from up top. Which was actually a little bit harder than you would think. I think it's actually easier just to deal with the enemies head, head on. Especially guys like this that don't actually shoot. It's the guys that shoot that you really have to worry about. The guys that don't shoot, they're not really... They're just kind of like... Cannon fodder in this game, basically. So we're actually gonna have to fight another Molotor in this level, unfortunately. Not too long from now, actually, if I remember correctly. Let's go kill this guy. Those projectile guys are always the worst. If there's an enemy in this game that's overused, I think it's those warlock dudes. <laughs> God. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> Those Molotor guys are such a pain. Especially in an area like that where you basically have to go flip a switch and then... Um... There he is! Let's just bust out the old rocket launcher. I mean, <clears throat> Phoenix Staff. Whoa, that 
that was scary. Dude, you guys are just supposed to be dead. Oh, that's right. I killed them the first time, but then I had to respawn. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why did I do that? What a waste. What a freaking waste, man. Ugh. Third time's the charm, right, guys? This weapon sucks when it's powered up. <laughs> it just feels like it's so terrible. Like when you strafe left, it also goes left. It's so hard to actually hit anything with it. Molotor be dead. Did those both lead me up there? I thought... Okay, one of them was supposed to... There we go. That's right. So many enemies. Even the secrets have enemies now. <laughs> That's how much this game's trying to troll me. That was all for the green key, by the way.
All right, let's go ahead and use that torch. All right, so this part's kind of interesting. And uh, so you basically have this long little bridge. And there's actually a big gust of wind that's constant. And so you can actually get pushed off of it. Which I want to say it's the first part in the entire game so far up to this point where there's actually a mechanic like that. What you want to do is take all these guys out first. Otherwise, life is kind of uh, like a living hell. You're getting shot at as you're trying to go across the bridge. Go ahead and use another torch just so we can see. Get our potions ready. Another one of the big skeletons over there. It's actually kind of funny because, like, your arrows actually get caught up by the gust as well. <laughs> Even that projectile does too. Oh man, of course I'm out of my... The only weapon that's semi-close to being a hit-scanning weapon. Alright, we're going all the way across. We'll just skip those guys, I don't really care at this point. I'm trying to play it safe, but... I think some cubbies are going to open here too. Yeah, there's going to be more enemies. But I don't really care about the enemies too much now. I just want to get out of here. We got the blue key. That takes us to the exit. And I believe there's going to be another skull here. Oh, geez, too. No invincibility or anything, so... I didn't realize it was three. I thought there was only two. Well, 
Well, I guess that's it. All right, so we're on to the final stage. Now, the big question here is, how long is this going to take us? Because I'll be honest with you guys, um... This, <laughs> this was one of the most annoying boss fights I have ever encountered. Like, no joke. So you basically start off, you're not quite at a boss fight yet. Let's go ahead and use our invisibility since we got that. We're going to be doing a lot of quick saving here, by the way. So we want to take out all these guys first just to make life easier. And then from what I can gather, you have to use your bat wings. Or wings of whatever the hell it's called. Go through a teleporter. And try not to get wrecked in the process. So what we're going to do is actually switch over to the Morph Ovum. For this part. Like I said, lots of quick saving. So let's go ahead and do that. We're so low on health. Guess we've already got the health potions. Oh, there's one more. Alright, so this is our wonderful, wonderful boss. Note the sarcasm. So what we're going to do is actually uh, take our time. Let him just shoot at us like a bumbling idiot for now. Try to gather all the ammo we can. We're probably going to need every little bit of it, by the way. Hello. Alright, so what I'm going to do is flip over to my wings once more. Teleport up here. Not teleport, but fly up here. Because there's a couple secrets. Ow. Got the Mystic Urn. I'm going to come back through here, just make sure we didn't miss any health or anything. I don't think we did. There's not really anything else we can do with the wings now. It was mainly just to get those secrets up top. It's a lot easier to get the secrets um, right now than it is uh, later on. So let's go ahead and quick save. And I'm trying to think, how do I want to do this? I think what I want to do is just waste this ammo first. This is where life really starts to suck. So this guy basically teleports all the way across the room. It's a massive arena type of stage. Uh, you don't want to get hit by his projectiles. They do a crap ton of damage. 
You don't want to use your Phoenix Staff right in front of an enemy either, because you might get hit and take lots of damage from it. Now, one of the issues with this boss is also trying to figure out where he teleported to. It's very difficult to figure it out. There aren't any, uh, there's no, like, audio panning in this game. There aren't really... At least for this boss. And we're almost dead already. And uh, unfortunately, I don't really have any rockets. I know that's not the right term, but... Ow. Let's use that invincibility. So we died! Probably the first of many. So again, like I said, it's... <laughs> who knows how long this is gonna take us. The big issue is just dealing with all the enemies around him. You could try to take out the enemies, but it doesn't always work in your favor. And this is where, when I was talking earlier about how the, uh... Your, your weapons in this game, you know, invokes knockback in the enemies. Uh, this is where they start flying all the way across the map, and your projectile weapons, like the Hell Staff, become almost useless at that point. It's so difficult to actually hit the, the enemies that you need to hit. I'm going to try to waste my Hell Staff ammo first. Oh, and he was right there and he hit me head on. If you have no armor, uh... His attack can pretty much just kill you in one hit, so...
Oh my god. You see how it just, uh, just keeps teleporting all over the place, and to go from like one spot to the next spot to the next spot, all in like three seconds, and so you won't be able to actually hit him. It's extremely frustrating. And we're dead. Yeah, so originally I was even thinking about just not doing the Let's Play of, of this episode because of this boss fight. Uh, I think I literally spent like an hour on this fight, maybe longer, uh, during my practice session yesterday. Trying to see if I could get familiar with the episode to try to play through it. And while I was able to play through the episode itself without too much trouble, this boss fight uh, just gave me utter hell compared to the rest. And what's interesting is I don't remember this boss fight being a pain back in the day. Like, I vaguely remember the fight, but I don't remember it being uh, as difficult as it actually is.
And that's it. Yeah, so if anybody uh, ever asks you what's one of the worst boss fights in a classic first-person shooter, tell them the third episode boss from Heretic. And to just walk away like you've won the battle. You've won the conversation. Because you probably did. It's an utterly horrendous boss fight. It's not any fun at all. I know I'm just complaining now, but... This guy takes way, way, way too many hits. Especially for the fact that he teleports all the way across the map. And you can barely actually get any damage off him. Because the second you hit him, he just goes to the other side of the map. But you can't tell where he's going because there's no rhythm or rhyme to it. Literally feels like he just teleports wherever the hell he wants. He's like, you know, I'm feeling like, um, over here. There's no discernible pattern. Tons of RNG. Super frustrating. Shit, I didn't want to use that right now. Great.
God, this boss is a pain in the ass. We might end up just calling it a day and calling it a let's play because I don't think you guys want to see me do this 25 times. Like, it took me so many tries yesterday that I literally thought I got lucky. Like, I ran into a bug or something and just magically killed the boss. And I don't know how I died. Dude, the fact that he just keeps teleporting all over the place is so frustrating. You can't get a good shot on him. We were talking about it on stream yesterday, and we think that... I'm not 100% sure, but we think that he starts teleporting more when his health is lower. So you basically have to just get lucky and have him just magically teleport right in front of you. Look, he's all the way on the other side of the map. Now he's not. Where is he? I can't see because there's so many goddamn projectiles. I can't see at all. I mean, it's just everything's so pixelated. It's just all blending together. See, there he is. He's going to disappear by the time I can freaking shoot him. Yep, yeah, just wasting my ammo. So basically, my strongest ammo is, or strongest weapon is useless on him, for the most part. 
Just completely missed him again. I really want to, like, meet the original developers and just, like, kick them all in the freaking nuts. Because, like, this is retarded. It's really effing retarded. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold back from raging. Seriously, did... You gotta be freaking kidding me. The enemies killed the boss for me. You gotta be joking, man. You gotta be freaking kidding me. That is so stupid. Is that the trick to beating him? Just like let him spawn in so many enemies that their project their projectiles hurt him. Enemy projectiles don't really do all that much good in this game, unfortunately. It's just like By the way, if anybody out there is watching that's experienced with this game and you've got some tips for this boss, definitely uh, definitely post some comments below and let me know what you um, if I'm doing anything wrong. What?
By the way, every time I use an inventory item, I have to take my hand off the mouse <laughs> to hit enter on the keyboard. I'm sure I can uh, reconfigure my controls using the Z-Doom, but I never bothered to do that, so I'm basically playing the game like I would, like I would have back in the day. I will admit, I really like the flamethrower effect on the, uh, the Phoenix staff. That's pretty cool looking. So after I kick the developers in the balls, I'd compliment them on how some of the graphics look. While they're writhing in pain. So aggravating. <laughs> You guys probably have no idea. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself how stupid this is. I feel like at this point you basically have to let the guys hurt him. But he's also got to spawn in near the middle for that to really work. Thank you. 
Yeah, look at that. They're all going after him. But the monster infighting in this game sucks so much that... That doesn't happen when you're actually playing the game. And it's not like they're doing that much damage anyway. He's still alive with even with all those projectiles. Dude, he takes way too much damage, man. Way too freaking much damage. I understand this is the hardest mode, but it's a little ridiculous. Like, if the rest of the episode wasn't this difficult, then there's really no reason for this kind of difficulty spike. There's really no reason at all. Because at this point, it's just a matter of luck. It's not even really a matter of, like, skill. You guys saw me dodging those projectiles just fine for the most part. Apparently I'm missing a secret too. Not that it's gonna really help me all that much, but... I wonder where it is. Alright, this is going to be my last time officially. I think we've been spending at least a half an hour on this part, and, uh... So I'm going to have to throw the towel in if, uh... If I can't do it this time. There's really no point in trying to continue. As you, as you guys can see, it's... This boss is a major pain. It's not any fun. I'm not having any fun playing this guy right now for you guys. And... He takes so much damage to take out that it's just, it's absolutely ridiculous. So, but you guys have officially seen pretty much the entire episode. You're not going to see the ending, unfortunately, but you've effectively seen the whole thing. All the parts that really matter. And, uh, you know, I guess that's what counts. I'm not gonna stop this Let's Play. I, I want to finish this Let's Play. I know there's other people on YouTube that want to see me do this, get through the whole game. Um... So I'm still gonna practice Episodes 4 and 5 and try to do Let's Plays on those. Um... Let's just hope that those boss fights are a hell of a lot easier than this one. 
Now, if I recall correctly, I believe Heretic was actually a released as a three-episode game. And kind of like Ultimate Doom, they had um, add-on content released later as Shadow of the Serpent Riders. So you got the original three episodes of Heretic, and then you got two brand new episodes. And with all those combined, that consists as Shadow of the Serpent Riders. Her Heretic, Shadow of the Serpent Riders. And so, like, originally, this was the end of Heretic. Which, you know, that might be why it's as hard as it is. But still, it's just ridiculously difficult. What the hell, man? I don't even know how the hell he hit me. He wasn't even in my sight. This kind of boss fight, too, you would expect there to be more ammo. Oh, my God. All right, one last try. That wasn't a good effort. That wasn't a good effort at all. No rhythm, no rhyme. It wouldn't be so bad if he just stopped teleporting as much as he is, like... See? 
He just literally teleported five, six times in a row, and I haven't had a single chance to try to hit him with my Phoenix Staff. Come on! I hear him shooting, but I don't know what he's shooting at.
Those are really some of the worst enemies to be spawning in that amount as well. There's way too many enemies. And we're probably dead. <sighs> Look at all those projectiles, it's just insane. Insane. I guess on the plus side, I figured out where the secret is. Because <laughs> it did us uh, so much good, right? And that's it! I am done. I am done with this stupid ass let's play. I am s super annoyed at this level, at this boss. I was really pissed off at it yesterday when I played it on stream. It literally took me an hour at least, maybe more. Um, the, this, this boss takes way too much damage to take out. It's absolutely absur absurd. It's almost like nobody play tested it. Unless I'm doing something wrong. There, there's the very possible possibility that I am doing something wrong, but as you guys can see, I'm just pummeling this dude with all my might, all my weapons and ammo, and uh, nothing's really happening. You know, I run out of all my Dragon Claw ammo, I run out of all my my Phoenix ammo, I pff, don't even, can't even bother with the, the crossbow because the dude just teleports away before you can even hit him. And the enemy projectiles touching him doesn't seem to be doing anything. He doesn't get pissed off and try to attack his cohorts, and they don't try to attack him. And, um, it's just a really dumb boss fight. It's- it's really stupid. It's not- I hate to end this Let's Play on a, on a negative note, but, uh, it's really putting me in a bad mood right now. It's really leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy episodes 4 and 5 more. And we'll see. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from Heretic, because I literally just spent, like, six hours playing Heretic over the last two days. Um, not counting over the weekend and doing that prior Let's Play. So I'm a little heretic heretic ick id heretic id out 
<laughs> I'm I'm a little burnt out on Heretic right now, so we'll see what what's gonna happen with uh, episodes four and five. But yeah, this boss can just go can go eat a big dick. Honestly, that's that's my closing thoughts in this let's play. Screw this boss, and um, any ex Ravensoft employees. If some random dude comes up and kicks you in the balls on the street, it was probably me. Or some other asshole that <laughs> got stuck on this boss. <laughs> God damn it. Now I'm cursing, and that's bad. I try to go through my Let's Plays without doing that. But this sucks. I'm just frustrated. Here, let's do it again. And just get killed. It's magical. Look at that. Now he's going after all the other guys, and I don't know... Monster infighting works if you're dead, but it doesn't work if you're alive. Like, this is probably what is supposed to happen. Maybe that's what the developers intended. They're like, oh, let's let monster infighting work on this boss, and that'll be real fun. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh, wait, it doesn't work. Ah ha 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 ha. We just trolled the player. We got his money. Ha 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 ha. Now we can just go and make really shitty Soldier of Fortune games. <laughs> okay, to be fair, that wasn't until later on, but... Alright, Heretic, you're putting me in a bad mood. I am done. Alright, guys, well... You guys take it easy. <laughs> if you even managed to stick around this long. Um, I don't even know what to say. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll try to be back with episodes 4 and 5, but right now it might be a week or two before I even bother picking this game up again, because I beat this boss yesterday on stream, so I can at least tell myself, okay, at least I've beaten the episode on the hardest skill mode, but I don't even know if I feel like trying to let's play <laughs> episodes 4 and 5 right now. It's just stupid difficult. Not even fun. Alright guys, uh, you take it easy. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.